Hi, welcome to the channel. Another video, another used tent which I snagged off Facebook Marketplace, but this one is a bit different. I normally start these videos by going, oh, it cost me 20 quid or it cost me 10 pounds. You know, I wonder what it's gonna be like. This one I paid 150 pounds for. I didn't even haggle because it was a good deal. It is a Nordis Svalbard One SI one person tent. It's a sill nylon, really robust DAC poles, really, really decent bit of kit. So I already own the PU version. I've always sort of kept an eye out for the SI version. This one came up really local to me, so I just couldn't resist. So it should be a really good tent. I've not pitched it yet, so I'm gonna pitch it now. We'll have a look around it. I'll tell you why um, I spent the extra money on getting the SI version if I've already got exactly the same tent in polyester. <laughs> Uh, obviously it's because I got a tent addiction, I keep buying them, but there's also some sound reasons for choosing the SI version as well, as well as, you know, a couple of drawbacks in terms of this will need to be seam sealed at some point. But let's get the inner pitch, I'll show you around it and I'll talk about why I think this is one of the best little tents you can get. One of the upgrades to the uh, SI version is these really lightweight pegs. Um, the other ones just come with, they're quite lightweight, but they're just standard hook pegs. These are a bit more, uh, bit more robust. And a second big upgrade is the poles. So the poles in the, on the PE version, just standard Nordis poles. These are DAC um, poles and they're slightly thicker as well. So slightly thicker diameter, which I'll pop in the, uh, up on screen for you to show the difference. I must confess, I've got a soft spot for, for Nordisk products. Um, obviously, I spent a long time researching my, my sort of budget, really solid mountain safe tent when I ended up buying the uh, Svalbard One PU. And I was really impressed with the quality of it, really impressed with how easy it is to pitch. Obviously, in a pitch first, some people are going to absolutely hate that and say it's a big no no for them. Um, but it's so easy to pitch and so quick that you can get up in, in, in rain and get the outer on really quickly. Um, and I think that you could probably keep the outer clipped in and still feed the poles through and stuff and do the little tying on. So I think you could manage a sort of hybrid pitch that way if you wanted to, if you really were concerned about heavy rain. Um, but it's a really, really cracking little tent. Obviously this is a, a used version of it, but it hasn't been used very heavily. So you've got, little pockets to uh, tuck the fly sheet out of the way and stuff or just tuck it into the corner there and yeah it's a really really nice little bit of kit a little bit of vent at the front and back condition seems absolutely fine the only slight drawback is obviously i think they were a smoker so there's a bit of a smell of cigarettes on the tent but it's it's only quite mild i'm hoping that uh, if i just take it home and air it out and stuff it'll be absolutely fine. Um, the pre-bent DAC poles give the tent plenty of height so you can sit up and get changed. Um, and obviously they give it a lot more strength as well, which is why it's rated um, for such high winds. Interestingly, even though this is an upgraded tent over the um, PU version, so there's a higher tear strength on the outer. Obviously the poles are DAC and they are thicker than the uh, PU version, that kind of stuff. It doesn't make, in order to make any extra claims over the weather um, proofness of this tent so it's still rated at 90 miles an hour the same as the PU version but it is a really nice bit of kit one of the main reasons I originally chose this tent is that I like to keep my pack inside the, te inside the tent so in this tent you've got enough sleeping space along the side to fit your pack on this wider bit here so I've always got my pack to hand so I can grab what I need and stuff and all the rest of it so that's one of the reasons I, I chose this tent over perhaps some of the other uh, tents in this kind of budget range. Obviously the SI version retails for over £200. Um, I think the cheapest I've seen it online, maybe £220, £230. Um, the RRP is about £290, so um, you can always get them significantly cheaper than the RRP I've, I've found in the past. But for me, the pricing of this tent just takes it out of the absolute um, budget end, which is why I bought the uh, PU version. But finding it used for £150, I could not say no. And I think having used some real budget tents over the last uh, over the last year that I bought for sort of ten pounds and all the rest of it, it is nice feeling the quality of the zips and stuff, how easy they go up with one hand. Because sometimes on the on the cheaper tents, that's something that is a bit of a pain. 
So um, yeah, so far, condition looks absolutely brilliant. 150 pounds, I'm really pleased with it so far. And obviously the advantage of it in a pitch tent is you can just pitch it in a first and just have it like that. As long as the uh, weather was mild, you weren't expecting too much wind and you weren't expecting rain. It does give you a second option just to pack light and sleep a bit more out in the open air. The outer pitch, nice and easy. Obviously, I've got the same tent in a different material, so pitching it's, it's absolutely fine. Everything seems in really good condition. It has got upgraded, uh, it's got slightly better sliders on it. Um, it's got better guy lines. Obviously, this material is completely different to the, uh, the P version. Much lighter, packs down much smaller, higher tear resistance. The only thing, obviously, bear in mind with this tent is you need to seam seal it. So apart from a slight waft of cigarette smoke, really pleased with the purchase. I, you know, obviously I wasn't, I wasn't sure if I wanted to upgrade, um, if I wanted to spend the money, but 150 pounds I think is really good value. I should be really designed my PU version to cover most of that. So yeah, it's a really, really nice tent. Obviously you've got a small, bit of porch. In terms of venting you do have a, a vent here which you can access from inside the tent uh, and unzip if you need to and you can zip it up if you want to keep things a bit warmer and stuff or if you're having some kind of rain ingress from the wind in particular, in particular angle and stuff. No it's a really really nice bit of kit and it hasn't got a velcro on the uh, on the door. It's got a uh, magnetic bits apparently so the magnetic things just clip it on so obviously I've only pitched it very roughly I've not bothered tightening things up or sorting things out but you get the idea it's a nice little tent so certainly I think that's the most expensive tent I've bought used so far I think it's more expensive even than my OEX uh, Cougar 2 EV but you certainly are getting a really good quality tent for the money I think the pack size is really good on it and if you obviously took the poles out, put the poles down the side of your backpack separately, and then just crushed down the outer of it and the inner into two little dry bags, it's not gonna take up much space at all. And even though it's 1.7 kilos, it doesn't feel that heavy. It does feel like a really compact little lightweight tent. You know, it's got very light guy lines, very light guy, um, tent pegs come with it. The fly sheets obviously weighs very little, and the inner is actually a softer, lighter, thinner sort of material than I was, I was expecting. So I think I'm, I'm really pleased I've, I've spent the money and, and upgraded to this. And I think that if I was gonna go on a mountain camp for a couple of days, um, you know, tick off some mountains, all the rest of it, and I wanted to take just one tent, which I could absolutely rely on, this would be it. Um, obviously incredibly tough little tent really good materials, really well specced. I would probably take some titanium pegs as well, just to double peg out the, the, the four um, guy and out points. And then I think you'd be ready for, for any weather. So 150 quid, I think I've done all right. Well, there we have it. The Nordis Svalbard One SI tent, a tent I've always wanted a tent I have seen on eBay quite a few times over the last year. I think ever since I bought the PU version, I was always wondering, did I make the right choice? Should I have gone for the SI version? Should I have spent the extra money and stuff? So when this one came up, absolutely couldn't resist. And uh, yeah, I'm really, really pleased um, with it. The differences are enough to make it really worthwhile over the PU, I think. The poles feel exceptional quality because they're DAC. You know, the, the guy lines, just the material, the fact it's going to pack down much more, it's going to save a little bit of weight. Pegs are really good quality as well. Yeah, the whole thing feels like a really classy bit of kit. Obviously, £150 is a load of money for me to spend on a used tent. But I think in this circumstances, it's a really good deal. It's a really good tent. And hopefully this year we'll see me wild camping in, in a few different areas with it. I really have got to get back on the mission to walk all the mountains in Wales. Um, so I've got to get up, up to sort of mid and north Wales this year and do a few two or three day hikes and a couple overnight stops to really tick off some 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 mountains. And I think if you if I'm you know 
It's not the lightest set in the world at 1.7 kilograms, but if I'm going to camp out in weather, which could be unpredictable and stuff, then, you know, this is a really strong, proven, decent bit of kit. So what I will do with the tent is obviously air it out, try and get rid of that rest of that cigarette smell. And um, what I will also do is a rain test on it because it hasn't been seam sealed. So obviously it needs to be seam sealed ideally to make it fully waterproof. But Nordis say that the way that they've designed the seams and that they're folded and stitched and stuff, that they do expand with the rain uh, and that they should help to keep out most water ingress. So I, I, what I will do is pitch in the rain before it's seam sealed overnight in heavy rain somewhere, maybe in the garden. See how it gets on. If it does really well, then I might not bother seam sealing it. But obviously if it does have water ingress, then I will go away, buy some seam sealing and do that. And then hopefully you'll see this tent on the channel in some nice mountain settings, exactly what it's designed for, exactly where it belongs. So if you've made it this far, huge thanks for watching as always. Um, if you like seeing all sorts of different used tents, I'm hoping that this year is going to be another good one on Facebook and eBay and stuff where I can pick up some more bargains under the £20 mark or £30 mark. So if that is of interest to you, do subscribe to the channel uh, and you'll be sure to catch all those videos then. Anyway, huge thanks again for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.